there are so little positive news and my project is like the bright star in the negative news. More in common is checking in. With the seven-year-old boy using his savings to help the elderly. I got 48 bags here. ABC News' Dan Harris with tips on calming the mind in these uncertain times. Some level of anxiety makes sense. And a photographer in Lithuania taking family portraits from the sky. I just took my drone and uh, took a few shots. All that and more when we check in. The only thing I'm photographing here at home are pictures of my food, but there's a photographer in Lithuania using his drone and physical distancing to take the perfect shot. I have a drone which I use in the wedding photography so I can come to people's house. So I just took my drone and uh, took a few shots and put the post on the Facebook that I can come and shoot you. You need just to come to your window and I'll fly with my drone. And I put those on the internet and then things got big since then. So everyone was liking and commenting and saying, come shoot me, shoot me, shoot me. And now I, I don't know, I receive like 20, 30 requests a day. When I came up with the, this quarantine portraits idea, I knew I have to shoot very creative. And I don't like the, uh, the idea of people just standing in the balcony with a tear in their eye and then looking through the window. I need people to do something, get creative, get crazy. They're incredible portraits too, because your drone is going up a number of stories and finding people right through their windows. Yeah, yeah, but of course they know I will come. They prepare for that. So they are not strangers. They ask to be photographed. I saw a lot of comments on the internet. They say, how come you can you cannot do this? I said, yes, I can. They asked me. And I receive messages not only from people who want uh, their photos done, but just from random people. They say, I don't, I don't need photos, but your, your project is so positive. Thank you. Because there are so many negative news in, in these days. So little positive news. And my project, it's like the bright star in the in the negative news content. In what ways do you think your photographs kind of remind people that they all have something in common, that they're going through the same thing? They are all very different people. There are families, there are single people, there are older people, but they're all going through this together. So I guess we have to just live it through or if we do it crying or smiling. So that's that's how we do it. it Alas, it's so good to check in with you. Uh, halfway around the world, uh, such an inspiration and what an incredible project. All right, thank you. I've been liking a lot of stuff on social media. Here are a few of my favorites, all about how to party even while maintaining your social distance, how to have a little fun even if you're staying home. Starting with this incredible four-year-old girl, couldn't celebrate her fourth birthday, and yet all her friends and their parents decided to drive right by her house as she waved to them and they did what they could to get in that birthday spirit. This next family had to improvise when they were celebrating grandma's 95th birthday. We go from that fourth birthday to the 95 year old who still has all seven of her sons out there as well as she's got 22 grandkids. So whatever they could do to celebrate here, they're holding their signs up each six feet apart and it says happy birthday. Big family there for grandma's 95th. We talked a little bit earlier about a drone taking photographs of family members. This is a guy who's found a way to use a drone to walk his dog. No better time to put those propellers into action than when you don't wanna go outside at all, but still need the dog to get a little bit of exercise. Even in New York, one of the hardest hit cities, people are finding love and connection. This couple just got married. It's Amanda Wheeler and Riley Jennings. They had a friend officiate from the apartment balcony as they said their vows and committed themselves to one another. And they were doing it because they knew it would be an example to the neighborhood that good things can still happen. And, uh, and everyone was cheering them on from the apartment windows. And finally, we head out to Utah for this incredibly unusual Zumba class. Look at this lady shouting through the megaphone, singing a bit as all her neighbors get out there and stretch it out. I love the energy of that place and that moment and just the sheer adrenaline of the neighborhood. Even the little ones are out there. 
keeping their distance, but getting, uh, getting swole. We're all looking for ways to help those most impacted by COVID-19, and seven-year-old Kavanaugh Bell is no exception. He's using his own savings to put smiles on the faces of senior citizens. Thank you. God bless you, okay? My name is Kavanaugh Bell. I'm seven years old, and I live in Gaithersburg, Maryland. People, they're not really thinking about the senior citizens. Well, I thought about Oh, my grandma, because she walks to the grocery store every day. I thought it's coronavirus season, so she shouldn't be walking outside. So that's why I decided to make care packs for the senior citizens to make sure that they're safe too. We got some toilet paper, some pasta, some tissues. Well, I was saving up money for through birthdays and Christmases for three years. I spent about $600 of my own money. And I also got donations to get enough food to give to 90 students because I like giving back to people. What's up guys? Thank you for your donations because I got 48 bags here. They felt happy and they felt like I got their back and they felt like they can count on me because they knew that they were safe. Thank you very much, It's important because we don't want them to catch coronavirus because the coronavirus is really strong. If it gets into your body, it could hurt you or like kill you. So that's why they should stay inside right now. Also, if you really want to help, which would be amazing, you can spread positivity in your community and give care packs to your senior citizens and make hot meals for them. I love you guys. Peace. There's only so much you can do inside the house, so it's forced me to come out and do a little bit of gardening, just like millions of others across America right now. It's absolutely crazy. Uh, I think on Saturday we had close to 500 customers. The demand is really strong. This weekend was a record. All these pots were filled with herbs just last weekend and they're all sold out. With everyone going into these quarantines or work from home environments, uh, they're, they're a little stir crazy pretty typical, right? It's human nature. You're cooped up all winter long. You want to get outside. You want to play in the dirt. Um, it's very therapeutic for people as well. House plants clean the air. Customers like that. Vegetables and herbs are really, are really popular at the moment because they can grow them on their kitchen counters. They can grow them outside. It's a project they can do with their children. Customers are buying quantities of mulch in 10 to 20 to 30 to 60 bags. Mulch madness. This pallet will probably be gone by uh, the end of today. We're struggling to keep up with a lot of the outdoor plants, uh, a lot of the what they call foundational plants, uh, product that you put around the foundations of your homes. We're gonna run low at some point. Normally this time of year, the garden center is pretty much packed. We usually bring in another $400,000 in plants and we've been postponing everything, so it's fairly empty right now. Well, we're trying to focus on the essentials for the customers. In this area, this is the time of the year when the garden centers make all their money for the year. So it's a struggle. It's not an easy call to call up your vendors and, and ask them to postpone, but it's probably, in my view, it's the right thing to do. It's not about profits, it's about keeping everyone healthy and safe. The big issue for us right now is reducing the number of lines, moving our checkouts outdoors, um, trying to make customers more comfortable. We're going to be recommending curbside pickups. We're going to be offering free deliveries within a 10 mile radius. So we're actually in the process of getting more iPads up and running so we can check customers out in open air, you know, and do whatever we can to keep customers happy and keep employees uh, engaged. One of the things that we're currently exploring is um, giving vegetables out to customers or vegetable starts out to customers for free. Um, we're trying to figure that out, get a whole bunch started and let them come in and pick them up and give them something to do at home. We're playing it by ear, we're still bringing in orders. We are very fortunate, but we're also at the same time having to pull back. So we're seeing the demand, we're happy about it, uh, but at the same time, this is the time of year where we're all bringing in all these extra personnel and now we don't know whether we're gonna have 
the ability to keep them all employed. Overall, I mean, if we can figure out a way to keep customers shopping in the outdoors, keep them moving, keep them socially you know, distanced, um, we should be able to weather the storm. We all know that physical distancing can help us maintain our physical health, but what about mental health? We checked in with ABC News' Dan Harris on how to hold on to peace of mind. Levels of anxiety are really peaking, and I think the important thing to know is that some level of anxiety makes sense. You don't need to beat yourself up if you're feeling anxious, but what you don't want is to tip over into panic. And that's where things like meditation can be really useful. We say that the healing is in the return. Talk about your 3 p.m. class and what that looks like for people. I said, let's just start doing free guided meditations at three o'clock East Coast time, noon West Coast time, and make it available to the public. This is the natural functioning of your own awareness. So just receive What it. we're developing here through meditation is the skill, the skill of happiness, of calm, of emotional resilience, of balance. Any anxiety, any thoughts or fears, just be in the background. How does the news sometimes, and, and certainly when world events like this are happening, how does that impact people's level of anxiety and as they're watching a lot of it right now? I think news can be extremely helpful, but we have to figure out how much is enough and how much is too, too much. Definitely stay informed, but don't get obsessed to the point where you become paralyzed. But there are simple steps you can take that will help you prevent yourself from tipping over too far into panic from useful, justifiable anxiety. This was the scene in Times Square today, normally the busiest part of New York City. Now the empty crossroads of a pandemic. How did social distancing, A, become such a catchphrase during this time? And, and why do you think there's such an important distinction there? When this crisis started to set in, we started using this, what I imagine to be a public health term of social distancing, let's be more than six feet apart from each other at all times. And I, people took that to heart, which is good, but I, I think we've over, we place too much emphasis on the social distancing. And, and, and that's why I'm trying to rebrand this as physical distancing. Yes, we need the distance, but if we, if we don't have social connection, if we aren't connected to other human beings, we are in trouble. My elderly neighbor, Naomi, and I, we meet at eight or o'clock uh, at night, every night, and sit in the hallway 20 feet apart and meditate together. Um, and it's been great. We've really got, gotten to know each other better. And I think it's important for her, and I know it's important for me. You figured out a way with so many of, of, of your services to connect pe with people digitally. And, and do you think that digital side of things gets in the way or actually can lead to a bigger universe of people meditating? Well. I don't think there's any substitute for face-to-face -face interaction. That's really what the human organism wants. But we're in a crisis and many of us don't have the luxury of face-to-face -face human interaction. So I think the digital world is a really great alternative. There is a little community starting to form there and they're yearning for some sort of inner technology like meditation that will calm them down. Uh, excited at uh, 3 p.m. today to get uh, meditating with my sister-in-law and appreciate uh, the guidance you have for, for folks around the country who are very stressed right now and, and just need a little relief. So uh, appreciate your guidance, Dan. Thank you. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. It was great to check in with all these people doing their best to help their neighbors and communities. We hope you join our Facebook group for more stories about what's going on around the world to help those who need it most.